My name is Harriet, I'm a Registrar Training in Dermatology and I'd like to share with you a few facts about melanoma in New Zealand. New Zealand has the highest rate of melanoma per population worldwide. It's the fourth most common cause of cancer and the sixth most common cause of death from cancer. So why do New Zealanders get so many melanomas? Well, this is due to our high levels of ultraviolet radiation from the sun, compared with the fact that a large part of our population is of European descent. Light-skinned people have approximately 20 times the risk of melanoma compared with darker-skinned people. Simply, the more easily you burn in the sun, the greater your risk of melanoma. There were roughly 4,500 melanomas diagnosed in New Zealand in 2011. Half of these are thin or in situ melanomas that grow within the top layers of the skin. The other half are thick or invasive melanomas that grow in the deeper layers of the skin. As a New Zealander, our risk of being diagnosed with melanoma each year is roughly 1 in 1,000. In the UK, the risk is 1 in 6,500. To compare with some more familiar risks, your risk of melanoma in the next year is less than the chance you'll be injured in a car crash, but more than the chance that you'll be struck by lightning. So we've established people with light skin get the most melanomas. Of these, the highest risk group is men over the age of 50 years. This graph shows the ages of people diagnosed with melanoma in 2011. You can see melanoma is not that common in children, but steadily increases with age. And around the age of 50 years, melanomas start to occur more in men compared with women. The diagnosis of melanoma in New Zealand is increasing. You may be surprised to hear this, especially given public health messages about the importance of being safe in the sun in recent years. This graph shows the rates of melanoma over the last decade. The overall increase in melanoma rates is due to increased rates in men, specifically non-Maori men. We see here melanoma is much less common in Maori. Despite increased melanoma diagnoses, the rate of death from melanoma has not changed much over the last decade. Here are the death rates from melanoma over the last 10 years. The highest rate of death is in non-Maori men, which is about 20% higher than in women. Melanoma is an uncommon cause of death in Maori, however death rates are higher than expected given low rates of melanoma in this group. Melanomas are cancers of the skin, and it's the skin of the back, chest and abdomen, also known as the trunk, where most melanomas occur. In 2010 and 11, 31% of all diagnosed melanomas were on the trunk. This was followed by 24% on the legs and 23% on the arms. The head and neck is a more common site for melanoma in older persons and overall accounted for 17% of melanomas. Early diagnosis and removal of melanoma is the key for successful treatment. This is because with time, melanomas become thicker and grow more deeply into the skin, which increases the risk of spread to other parts of the body or metastasis. From research, we know that the thickness or depth of a melanoma is a strong indicator on survival, and the risk of death from melanoma is increased for deeper lesions. Groups that tend to have deep melanomas include men, people over 75 years, and Maori and Pacific Islanders. Melanomas on the trunk also tend to be deeper than those found elsewhere on the body. This may be because melanomas on the trunk are diagnosed later, as they're on a relatively hidden site, or due to particular characteristics of the melanoma, for example, a quicker rate of growth. So let's recap the key facts about melanoma in New Zealand. We have the highest rate of melanoma in the world, making prevention and sun protection extremely important. Men older than 50 years have the greatest risk and also tend to have deeper melanomas than other groups. Melanoma rates in New Zealand are increasing and the trunk is the most common site. Thank you for taking the time to hear about this important issue for all New Zealanders. If you have any questions, please talk to your dermatologist or family doctor.